we're gonna go we're gonna go on to Facebook Live, so we will be live. All right, just don't worry. I she's not texting me back either, so don't worry. Okay. Oh, cool. We are recording and we are going to be on Facebook Live in just a minute. As we transition to Facebook Live, I'm welcoming everybody to our webinar, but please stand by as we connect to Facebook Live. And here we go. Going to the St. Anne's Mead Facebook page. Guess I need the glasses. And we're connecting. Preparing live stream preview. Hi. Thank you, Joanne. All right, good morning, everyone. And welcome to the fourth annual Breakfast with the Bishop. This is the first Breakfast with the Bishop, Bonnie A. Perry. And it is also our first virtual Breakfast with the Bishop presented by Christ Church Cranbrook. So this morning, please enjoy some coffee. We're virtual, enjoy your breakfast. We're gonna share some information and inspiration to get your day started. And then we'll move along from there and hopefully you'll have a wonderful Friday. I'm Peggy Goodwin. I am the Director of Marketing and Development for St. Anne's Mead. And this morning you're gonna hear from Jane Collins, Executive Director of St. Anne's Mead, as well as Re Reverend William Danaher, Rector of Christ Church Cranbrook and a great friend to St. Anne's Mead and our presenting sponsor, and then Bishop Bonnie A. Perry from the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan, who is also a member of the St. Anne's Mead Board of Trustees. And we really appreciate her taking, making St. Anne's Mead a priority amidst her very busy schedule. She's gonna talk about caregiving in a fraught world and what could be more timely and relevant. Now, a few housekeeping notes. Many of you know Breakfast with the Bishop is an important fundraiser for St. Anne's Mead. And so we wanna um, let you know exactly what Breakfast of the Bishop has done for St. Anne's Mead. When we originally started this four years ago, it was to support the capital campaign, which culminated in the beautiful memory care home at St. Anne's Mead. And that opened in 2018. And the memory care home is doing very well. Even in a COVID-19 world, it is near capacity. We then moved on to um, renovate and refresh common areas in our assisted living home. And it helped to fund those renovations in our library lounges and our lobby, which are a little bit delayed because of COVID-19, but we are moving along with those. And you're gonna be very pleased with what you see when you come back to St. Anne's Mead, hopefully in the near future. Now, I do wanna preface that everybody who's invested in St. St. Anne's Mead in the breakfast event we will honor those sponsorships and those ticket purchases when we um, have an in-person breakfast with the bishop, hopefully in the near future when it's appropriate, safe, and practical to do so at the Detroit Athletic Club. And I want to thank all the sponsors who have stepped up to support St. Anne's Mead. Most importantly, Christ Church Cranbrook has stepped up in a big way, and they marshaled the resources of their membership to present Breakfast with the Bishop, and they've been a great friend to St. Anne's Mead. And the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan has been a very great friend to St. Anne's Mead and an event sponsor. And then we have table sponsors, um, great advocates of St. Anne's Mead, John J. Lynch and Ann Himstra, Craig and Sarah Hammond, <clears throat> Cheryl Ferdtack, our board president. The St. Anne's Mead Board of Trustees as a whole is, has sponsored Breakfast with the Bishop. We have media sponsors that actually have been helping to promote Breakfast with the Bishop when we had the um, actual event at the DAC, Our Detroit and De News Talk 760 WJR. So we thank you very much. We look forward to working with you in the future as well. Um, I do wanna show some of our priorities for this year by sharing my screen. Let's see.
Here we go. Oops, didn't come up. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, I think we're there. So this is, if you go to the St. Anne's Mead website, which is S-T-A-N-N-E-S-M-E-A-D.org, you'll see um, the Give Now page and you would click that to see the different ways you can support St. Anne's Mead. And I've highlighted this, so that's why it looks a little funny on your screen. And if you scroll down to the caregiver fund, this is our new fund um, that came out of COVID-19. Now to backtrack, 2020 was deemed the year of the caregiver at St. Anne's Mead before COVID-19 turned our world upside down. What the caregiver fund is, is simply a gift to operations to help support the sustainability and strengthen St. Anne's Mead. If you ask any nonprofit what their greatest need is this year, it is operations. COVID-19 has impacted all of us, every organization. Okay, yeah, I know, a cough, so I'm just doing it on my phone okay. as I drive into work. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Just, we maybe Somebody's meter. coming through. Yeah. And um, so the caregiver fund, you can make a donation by clicking this link right here and it's a secure donation online. Our other priority area is our angel fund. Our angel fund is a fund for residents in need who are facing economic hardship, often at the end of their life. Now, this is um, a fund that helps subsidize their rent, their utilities and their activities of daily living, their basic needs. And it really helps support um, their lives, especially often at the end of their life. So that's a very important fund for us. And we really appreciate those of you who have already made gifts to the Caregiver Fund and the Angel Fund this year. I talked about Mission Possible. And then um, we have naming opportunities and we still have a few naming opportunities left. Um, our assisted living home in our North Lounge is available. Our memory care home family lounge is available. We have some rooms available in our memory care home for naming. If you're ever interested as a group, a family, an organization and learning how to name um, or leave a legacy at St. Anne's Mead like that, please get in touch with me. I'd love to share some ideas and get your thoughts on how we could make that happen. And then you would see our yeah, you scroll down. Um, this is our 20, our most recent annual report, our 2019 report to the community. And you will note that 2019 looked very different from 2020. Um, 2020 is gonna look a lot different than this. We are all close and hugging. And, um, and then at the bottom here is, this is the most important thing I wanted to point out is our pie chart. Our pie chart shows you that more than 80% of all earned and unearned income goes to care and programming at St. Anne's Mead. When you're making a donation to any organization, look for that information. That shows you that the organization uses their income to support their mission. When it's more than 80%, that's a great sign. It shows that the money is being used for what they say they do. And for St. Anne's Mead, it's the care of our residents. There's also plan giving opportunities on this page that you can look at and consider. And please get in touch if you ever wanna discuss that. My contact information is right here. And then our mailing list, our email list, and then our, our address and everything is at the bottom. So I just wanted to share that basic information with you so that you know when you're considering your gifts this year, it's a very challenging year and we consider every gift precious. Um, so we really appreciate all you've done for us. And I'm gonna move us along right now. Our next speaker is gonna be Jane Collins from St. Anne's Mead, followed by Reverend William Danaher from Christchurch Cranbrook and our keynote speaker, Bishop Bonnie Perry. Please use the Q&A at the bottom. We will be answering those questions. And then if you, um, if we can't get to your question during the webinar, we will certainly follow up with a report after the event. So without further ado, let's move along to Jane Collins from St. Anne's Mead. Jane? I'm ready. Am I on? You're on. I'm on. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. 
This is such an unusual event and at such an unusual time in history. And for that, I am especially grateful to each and every one of you for joining us today. Many of you have supported St. Anne's Mead in the past, and I thank you again for that support. I see every gift that's made to St. Anne's, and I'm continually humbled to see those and to receive them. I hope you all realize the tremendous impact that your gifts have had on our ability to continue to do what we do. As all of you are well aware, the year of 2020 did not turn out like any of us expected. I, for one, was really excited for 2020. I just liked the sound of it. I liked the round number. Um, I began the, the year with a trip in January. Um, it was an extraordinary trip to the Holy Land, and I will never forget that trip. It was such a great start to the year, and I was looking forward to the rest of the year. But we all know what happened in March and April and May. The coronavirus hit with a vengeance and nursing homes and all long-term care facilities took a heavy hit. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, but we got hit hard. And in looking back, knowing what I know now, I am certain that the coronavirus had established itself throughout our community long before the first case was diagnosed in Michigan. And that was true in many places throughout our industry. And those were dark times at St. Anne's and at nursing homes all over the country. Our industry was in the news all the time and none of that news was good. We were somehow portrayed as being insensitive to the struggles of our residents, uncaring, unconcerned, unprepared. We were not initially hailed as heroes like hospital workers were. Instead, everyone was seen in this vaguely negative light and that was hard for all of us. But the truth is there's so much more to the story than what was reported in the news. And yes, we struggled as we watched our residents and our fellow staff members get sick. And yes, we sometimes felt like we had let them down. We were working without adequate PPE, which couldn't be bought, be bought anywhere for any amount of money. We were working with no access to testing for ourselves or for our residents. But let me tell you about our staff and how they responded to that situation. And I mean all our staff, the nurses, the direct care workers, the housekeepers, the dining department. They could have walked away, but they didn't. Instead, they worked harder than they had ever worked before. And they did it for more than a paycheck. They did it because they truly cared about the people that they had come to love. They were committed to seeing them through their good days and their bad days. And not because they didn't realize the risks. Many, if not all of our staff were fearful for their own health, fearful for their family's health, but they didn't let that fear keep them from coming to work. They kept coming day after day with very little recognition. I have never been so proud of them. Without staff like that, it wouldn't be worth our time or our money to keep St. Anne's open year after year. It truly is a special place. And as the pandemic unfolded, it seemed like the whole landscape of healthcare changed several times a week. Uh, new information, new restrictions, new policies, executive orders, they all emerged at a dizzying speed. But our caregivers came into work day after day and they gave tender loving care to our residents, feeding them, bathing them, holding hands, giving comfort. These healthcare heroes are the heart and soul of every nursing home and assisted living. They deserve all the accolades and support that we can give them. Now, all of us would like this pandemic to go away tomorrow and I would not wish it to happen again to anyone. And there's no question it has taken a huge toll on so many industries across our state and our country. But I can also say that I and the people I work with have come through it with a renewed commitment to care for the very vulnerable members of society that need our help. We're not going anywhere. We are here to serve and we will do everything in our power to keep our residents safe 
and able to enjoy their final years. So thank you again for joining us this morning. I so appreciate each one of you and hope to see you in person and at St. Anne's sometime in the very near future. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Reverend Danaher is next. Welcome, Reverend Danaher. Thank you so much. And I want to begin by saying to you, Jane, um, how proud I am to know you and how proud I am to know all of the staff at uh, St. Anne's Mead and how grateful I am for the work that you did. And I really, I really took to heart what you said about having to weather some, some uh, insensitive comments and uh, that were made. And and one of the things that was very much at the forefront of my mind is I take care of my parents who are in um, uh, an adult uh, a senior facility. I know how much uh, people had to, to turn on a dime and pivot in this pandemic. So I wanna first and foremost, thank you. And I also know that at this breakfast with the Bishop, it's been the practice of um, St. Anne's Mead to have some of the staff come in. And I, are they here with us today um, as Summer. well? I want to thank the staff for all the work that they've done, and um, I, 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 you know, there are certain um, callings in life. I think the clergy can be among them, where the sacrifices will never be outweighed by the compensations, at least in this life. But what you all have given um, has been noticed. God has noticed it, and God has celebrated it, and God continues to lift you up. And on behalf of God, as I sometimes can speak, thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of God's heart for all that you're doing. And Peggy, I want to say to you, thank you for the incredible work that you've done to, um, to put this Breakfast with the Bishop together. This is not an easy time for fundraising, uh, particularly in uh, difficult economic uh, uh, terrain, as we're all walking through that together. And you have been uh, dogged and steadfast and, and, and brilliant in the way that you've led this organization. So thank you for your work. And then finally, I want to thank the sponsors, uh, Craig Hammond uh, and John uh, Lynch and Ann, Ann Himstra. And I know there's some other Lynches uh, here, as well as some longstanding supporters. Mark Robinson, um, uh, Elizabeth Briody is here. And I want to thank you all for being here and being who you are, uh, being so dedicated to this. Um, I, uh, every time, this is the first time that Bishop Bonnie gets to see me do whatever I do at these things. Um, I, I'm going to open us with prayer and then give it to Bishop. Uh, uh, Bishop Bonnie has been uh, a guiding light in this diocese. I'm extraordinarily proud to call her my Bishop. And I'm so grateful for the work that she's done. Uh, I can't imagine uh, her leading any better. And I can't imagine um, worse circumstances under which to begin an episcopacy than what she's had to live through. Um, I'm going to uh, do a couple of, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to open with a couple of poems that I wrote because I did that last year and it seemed to work well. Um, I, I use poetry as a way of uh, praying and sometimes my poems are okay. And I post them on Facebook and it, weirdly enough, people are starting to notice them. I, I published a poem recently. <laughs> <laughs> and who knew? Who knew? Um, so uh, the first poem is, um, is just a short one, uh, but I think it speaks to all that you have had to do, uh, Jane and the staff. Let's break ourselves open, let our insides out. The heart was not meant to shelter in place. It heals. By bleeding. Um, that's a short little poem, almost a couplet, but it just speaks about all the ways that our hearts have been affected this, this, this past year. Um, I think in particular of Mike Davis, a parishioner of, of Christ Church Cranbrook who passed away uh, from COVID-19, um, as well as other people, Joyce Turlin, who passed away, who was a member of Christ Church Cranbrook, and uh, the grieving was so difficult. And uh, I think that God is calling us uh, to, to, to lean in to our, um, our grief and lean into 
um, our, our, our battered hearts and to let them bleed. Uh, and even in a time of social distancing to heal. And then the final uh, poem that I'm gonna lay, lay on you tonight, today, this is like being in San Francisco in, in the 1960s, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Uh, this is called uh, Invocation, and it's meant to kind of call God into this space of where we are as a, as a group. The reservoir receded, the jagged earth emerging was always visible to those who dip their heads below the surface or to those who sink. Open our eyes. If standing in mud is our fate, let us be builders, making bricks from the strawless clay, that we might repair what we have broken or pave a road to safety. Where does rain come from but you? Send a deluge, deluge. Let justice roll down. Let mercy flow. We whose feet are stuck implore you. Help us swim or stay as you will. And I kind of wrote that poem to speak to the challenges that we face right now, where we don't know, where we feel like we are stuck in mud, the reservoir recedes, and all of us are experiencing a bit of the jagged earth of this world that so many know so well. And um, it's been a time of moral awakening to our own stuckness. And, uh, and, and, and also to God's actions. So without further ado, let us pray. Dear God, we lift up before you and place into your hands our nation, our, our community, our churches, and places that provide caregiving, such as St. Anne's Mead. Bless the caregivers. Give them supernatural abilities and energy. Fill them with your spirit. Help them to meet the challenges of the day. Um, give them uh, grace and fill them with peace as they minister in fraught times. And bless the residents. Surround them with your love. Let them know that they matter and that they are beloved by all of us. Help us to see a way forward together. These things we ask in your mighty name. Amen. And now I, I turn it over to Bishop Bonnie Perry, who is such a wonderful bishop, and I'm so grateful for her being here today. Bill, thank you very much. And um, good morning. Um, good morning. Uh, Jane and Peggy, Cheryl, uh, all the board members, family and friends, and and I know devoted supporters of St. Anne's Mead, thank you so much for asking me to speak this morning. And I promise when it is safe for us to gather, I'll make sure that there's a real breakfast for all of you, for all of us. Because it's been a year. Good Lord in heaven, it has been a year. And I know a few other groups who have come together, prayed together, worked together, wrestled together, and cared together more than the St. Anne's Mead family. And me offering you, offering all of you words on caregiving in a fraught world is a little bit like a bunny rabbit offering a frog tips on how to swim. Um, I, I see it from the surface and you all are breathing the water. And I have such deep, profound respect for you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus offered these words to someone who was trying to test him. Tell us, what's the greatest commandment? To which he replied, love the Lord your God 
with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Our ability to be in relationship with God is all wrapped up, intertwined and interwoven with our ability to care and love our neighbor. And for some of us, experiencing God's love, being in relationship with God is, is an idea that we long for, but we can find it to be elusive and fleeting sometimes. Whereas caring for someone else, um, we, 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 know how to, we know how to do that. And, and for all of you who know that so well, I, I say that's good news for your care for others, being with people in any way we can in this weird COVID tinge world is a tangible way to connect with the holy. Feeding people, tending, to people, calling people, standing outside windows and miming hugs and blowing kisses and teaching older loved ones the wonder of Zoom and FaceTime. Um, all of those are ways to transcend the pain and isolation of our world and be with each other. Love God, love your neighbor. And by loving your neighbor, we love God, we encounter God. And sometimes in this time, in this time in which we are blessed to live, caring and doing and being with each other is so hard, so complicated, so fraught that we may want to quietly dissolve into despair or rise up in riled exasperation and frustration and I know that I have done both. I am not accustomed to being limited in how I care. And I am so frustrated that I cannot be with people in the way I know how. So that there are days when I vacillate between depression and anger, and neither of which are places where I find my best self. And I suspect in these past seven months, I'm not alone in this, which brings me to the phrase of this biblical passage that is sometimes overlooked. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. We cannot care for loved ones or strangers. We are sorely limited in being in relationship with our God when we have neglected or lost the capacity to love ourselves. Remember back when we used to get on airplanes and fly places? Like what was that, like 10 years ago, right? But remember the flight attendants? the ubiquitous speech that we would mostly ignore having heard it all before. Remember how the attendant would remind us if we were traveling with small children to put our oxygen mask, our own oxygen mask on first before attending to theirs? I mean, of course you do. And this is not an unsolicited piece of advice that you've never heard before. But I offer it to us, to me and to all of you that in this world of COVID fueled deaths and political anxiety and a world in a more fraught world than I ever could have imagined when Peggy Goodwin and I discussed a possible topic for my talk, um, we will be of little use to anyone and likely to completely ignore God Almighty if we do not place our own oxygen masks on first. And I invite you each day to do two things that soothe your soul and enliven your spirit. For me, it is sitting with my most amazing Assam tea and breathing in and out and looking and praying for God. And the second is working out. I need to be quiet and to sweat, to be fully grounded. 
and I'm sure your needs are different, but I invite you to embrace one or two of your needs. For when we love ourselves, we honor God's image and likeness in which we've been created. We then have a model for how we may love others and a renewed capacity to put up with the dross and draining calamity of daily living in 2020. And we may then have the ability to look beyond ourselves and to see our God alive and at work in our world. My friends, love the Lord your God with all your hearts and minds and souls and love your neighbor as yourself. This is my wish for you, for me, and for all of us who inhabit this fragile world. Thank you. Unmute myself. Thank you, Bishop Perry. Thank you so much. I wish we could do this every week. How about you guys? <laughs> At least until we're back to normal, if that ever happened. <laughs> I'm getting comments. Wonderful message. Thank you very much. Um, we will, this is recorded. So we will be sending this out to anybody who could not attend this this morning. And again, as Bishop Perry said, we are gonna strive very hard to find that date when we can actually meet in person. <laughs> So thank you so much. If there's any questions, keep typing them in. But other than that, you will be getting a report and um, anything we can do for you, please let us know. Anybody else want to say, bid everybody a good weekend? Jane? Yeah, have a great weekend, all of you. Again, thank you for coming. Um, I'm heading into work. I'm sure most of you are too. So um, here's to just one more quiet weekend in the middle of strange times and hopefully we will at some point be back in the same room again. Thank you. I want to also uh, say thank you to everybody and just to let uh, those of you know, um, we are working with the uh, mayor's office to put out a special broadcast of um, a service of remembrance that we did a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, that we taped with Christina Gerke, who was the soprano that was featured at Michigan Opera Theater. And Rochelle Riley will be giving the meditation. And um, you can find that at the, uh, uh, I think it's called Channel 22. Uh, you'll find it on, on your, uh, uh, as well as uh, if you look uh, on Comcast for Detroit City, but you can also find it much easier, I think, if you just go to Christchurch Cranbrook's website at 7 p.m. November 1st, All Saints Day. And, um, uh, and the, the theme of it is called My Redeemer Liveth. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can find it on Facebook, they just have a reminder and please share it with friends. We would really love to have you be part of that, every, each and every one of you. Uh, it, was a, it was a blessing to have Christine with us and to have Rochelle and to have others participate in the service. Thank you, Reverend Danaher. One um, final note, um, most of you know who Chef Preston is, our wonderful chef, very talented at St. Anne's Mead. Next Thursday, getting ready for Thanksgiving, he's gonna, we're gonna have a live webinar from our Facebook page and we're gonna talk about healthy cooking for Thanksgiving and how to have a senior friendly Thanksgiving, but make it flavorful. <laughs> so that'll be next Thursday at, I think it's November 3rd at three o'clock. We'll be live streaming from our Facebook page. So please tune in for that as well. A little bit of fun, a little bit of levity before the holidays. However, those turn out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So farewell for now. And thank you so much, Bishop Perry. Great message. We're going to have a much better day because of it. Yeah, my honor. Amen. My honor, friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very, very, very much for your good work. Just stunning. And it matters. It matters. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have a blessed day. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you so much. Bye.